Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Melissa and I'm a nursing student. So in today's video, we're going to be doing dosage calculations. Before I get any further into the video, I want to put a disclaimer that I'm not a teacher. I'm not even a nurse yet. As of me filming this video, I am a senior nursing student. This video is not intended to replace your instructor's teaching, but to hopefully be helpful as you're practicing and refreshing your nursing skills. So this is actually a re-upload. There was an error on one of the slides in my original video, so I'm just going ahead and refilming the whole thing. Now in this video, we will be solving dosage calculations using the dimensional analysis method. There are a few different methods of solving dosage calculations, otherwise known as MedCalc or medical calculations. But in this video, we will just be using the desired over have method. So before we get into it, I'm going to note that the important components of any dosage calculation problem are going to be your starting unit or units, the desired unit, which is ultimately what unit your answer will be in, and lastly, any potential conversion factors within the problem. So for example, if you're given a patient's weight in pounds and somewhere in your equation, you will need to convert that rate to kilograms. That will be a conversion that you will need to do and that will count as a conversion factor. Now, these are just some common conversions that you will likely encounter when doing dosage calculation problems. These are not all of the conversions that you will encounter, but these are some popular ones. Each unit is abbreviated, so you can take a moment to pause the video here if you need to, to review this. So now we're going to get into how to solve dosage calculation problems using the desired over have method. On this slide, I have listed the formula for this method. It's D over H times Q equals X. So this is actually the abbreviated formula. The fully written out formula is desired over have times quantity equals X, with X being our answer. Now let's break it down. When we say desired, that's referring to the ordered medication dose. So what was ordered for the patient or what is the desired dosage for the patient to receive? The have refers to the actual dosage that you have on hand. The quantity refers to the amount of drug that is supplied. Lastly, we have X, which will be the dose that is actually administered or in the context of dosage calculations, it will be our answer or what unit our answer will be in. Now let's break it down. When we say desired, that is referring to the ordered medication dose. So what was ordered for the patient or what is desired for the patient to receive? The have refers to the actual dosage that you have on hand. The quantity refers to the amount of drug that is supplied. And then lastly, we have X, which will be the dose that is actually administered or in the context of dosage calculations, it will be our answer. Now, if this is confusing, don't worry. We're about to do a practice problem and I'll take you through it step by step. So for our first practice problem, it reads, a patient has an order for six milligrams of medication. The medication available is three milligrams per tablet. How many tablets should the nurse administer? Now, for this first problem, I did not list what medication was ordered for the patient because I want you guys to just focus on the numbers in the problem. When it comes to dosage calculation problems, the numbers and the units are what is important. And so I feel like it can get confusing when you're trying to figure out what medication is given and what route or what method it's given in. So for this problem, we're only going to be focusing on the numbers and the units so you can get the formula down and practice how to set up your equation. So when looking at the problem, I have highlighted all the important parts. Six milligrams is what will be your desired dose. So this is what we want to be giving the patient. Three milligrams is what we actually have. So the medication available is in three milligram tablets. And one is the quantity. So that means that for each tablet, or it means each tablet equates to three milligrams of medication. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, for any dosage calculation problem, you're going to want to focus on three important factors, your starting unit, your desired unit, and your conversion factors. For this problem, our starting unit is in milligrams because our desired is six milligrams. Our ending unit, which is what our answer will be in, is also in milligrams. 
we do not have any conversion factors in this problem because this problem does not require any conversions. I wanted to keep question one, our sample problem, as simple as possible. So now we're going to remove the problem and we're just going to focus on our important elements, which are our desired, our have, and our quantity. So the first thing that we're going to do is set up our formula. So desired over have times quantity is our formula. All we're going to do now is plug in our numbers where they fit. So six milligrams is our desired, three milligrams is what we have, and the quantity is one because there are three milligrams of medication in one tablet. Now that the numbers are plugged into our equation, we're going to break down the equation and start solving. So the first part of our equation is six milligrams over three milligrams, or six milligrams divided by three milligrams. So you can plug that into your calculator if you need to. I'm not great at math, so no matter how simple things are, I like to put into my calculator just to be sure that I get the correct answer. So six divided by three, of course, equals two. And now we're going to multiply that answer by our quantity, which is one. So two times one is equal to two. So our answer is going to be two. But we're not done just yet. The final part of this equation is to make sure that we are giving our answer in the appropriate unit. So the answer is two, but two what? For this problem, the appropriate unit is going to be in tablets. So the answer to the actual question, how many tablets should the nurse administer? The answer is that the nurse should administer two tablets. Now we're going to move to our second problem. This problem is a little more tricky because the medication is in the problem, but it won't actually change the way we set up our equation. It shouldn't change anything. So the problem reads, a patient has an order for bupropion 150 milligrams PO. PO just means by mouth or orally, so this will be administered through the patient's mouth. The medication available is 50 milligrams per tablet. How many tablets should the nurse administer? Now, the first thing that I want you to do, and you can go ahead and pause the video so you can do it on your own, but I want us to figure out what is our desired, what is our have, and what is our quantity in this problem. So our desired is going to be that 150 milligrams because that is what the patient has an order for. That is what we want to make sure the patient receives. Our have is going to be 50 milligrams. Our quantity is going to be one. So one tablet is going to equate to 50 milligrams and vice versa. So we're going to need to figure out how many tablets we need for the patient in order for the patient to receive their 150 milligrams of bupropion. And just like the last problem, even though this problem has a medication listed, it really doesn't matter what the medication is because our focus really is going to be on the numbers and the units in this problem. So we're going to break this equation down the exact same way that we broke down the last one. First, I want you to write out the actual formula, which is desired over have times quantity. The next thing that we're going to do is plug in our numbers into our formula. So in the desired spot, we're going to put 150 milligrams. In the have spot, we're going to put 50 milligrams. And in the quantity, we're going to put one for our one tablet. Now that the equation is set up, we're going to break it down. So first we divide 150 milligrams by our 50 milligrams, and the answer is 3. So now that we have the answer of 150 divided by 50, we're going to multiply that answer, which is 3, by our quantity, which is 1. And 3 times 1, of course, is 3. So our answer is 3. But remember, in our final step, we want to make sure that we provide our answer in the appropriate unit. So in this case, that unit will be tablets. So back to our original problem, how many tablets should the nurse administer? The nurse should administer three tablets to the patient. And now we're gonna do a third and final practice problem. 
This problem is more challenging than the previous two because not only did I list a medication, but this problem also has a conversion factor. So we're going to go through that together. So the problem reads, a patient has an order for diazepam 0.5 milligrams IV. The medication available is diazepam 4 milligrams per 2 liter vials. How many milliliters should the nurse administer? So we're going to now break down the problem. So the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to look at our actual numbers and what is important in this problem. Again, for the purpose of dosage calculations, we're not going to worry about what medication is being administered. We're just going to look at our numbers and our units. So we're going to look at our desired. Our desired unit is 0.5 milligrams, and that is desired because it is what was ordered for our patient. Ultimately, 0.5 milligrams is what we want to be giving our patient. Our have is 4 milligrams, and then our quantity is 2 liters. So for every 2 liter vial of medication, you're going to have 4 milligrams of the actual medication in it. So for every 2 liter vials of liquid, you're going to have 4 milligrams of the actual medication in it. Just like any equation, we want to make sure that we are looking at our starting unit, our desired unit, and our conversion factors. Our starting unit is milligrams, our desired unit, so what our answer is going to be in, or what unit our answer is going to be in, is going to be milliliters. So when we are finding our answer, we need to make sure that our answer is in milliliters. And then our conversion factor is that we will be converting liters to milliliters in this problem. Now we're going to break the problem by setting up the desired over half formula. And again, the formula is desired over half times quantity. So we're going to go ahead and plug in our numbers just like we would with any equation. 0.5 milligrams is going to go in the desired spot. 4 milligrams is going to go in the half spot, and 2 liters is going to go in the quantity spot. So we're going to break this down and do it one step at a time, starting with 0.5 milligrams divided by 4 milligrams. And the answer is 0.125. Now we're going to take that 0.125 answer and multiply that by 2 because our quantity is 2 liters. And our answer is 0.25. Now if we were giving our answer in liters, so if liters was our ending unit, we would be finishing here and our answer would be 0.25 liters, and the equation would just stop there. But when we look at the actual question, they're asking us how many milliliters should the nurse administer. We're going to need to convert 0.25 liters into milliliters in order to get our final answer. So how are we going to do that? <laughs> 0.25 liters equates to how many milliliters? Now remember at the beginning of the video, we went over conversion rates. Remember that milli translates to a thousand. So one liter is going to be 1,000 milliliters. That's the conversion rate. So like I mentioned, I'm not personally good at math. So what I always do when it comes to converting liters to milliliters is a little trick. I will move the decimal three spaces to the right. And in this case, that will convert 0.25 liters to 250 milliliters. So our answer will ultimately be 250 milliliters. Now going back to the original problem, how many milliliters should the nurse administer? The answer is that the nurse will administer 250 milliliters to the patient. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.